Hello, I'm Tracy Grimshaw. Welcome to A Current Affair. One minute, these five and eight-year-old children were innocently throwing a ball around their father's office. The next, they were ordered onto their hands and knees by a gang of armed robbers, innocent victims of gun crime where attackers simply don't care who they target. It was my worst nightmare. He kept on pointing the gun at us, so he was pointing it at me. It's only a matter of time before some young kid is going to be shot and killed. It's the middle of school holidays and two small children are playing catch in their dad's office when their worst nightmare storms in. Three armed men tear through the office screaming, get down. One is waving a 9mm pistol. He points it at the children, an 8-year-old girl and 5-year-old boy, ordering them to the ground. The owner of the business, their father, is then dragged to the money room with a knife at his back and forced to open the door. While they begin stuffing bags with cash, the gunman keeps watch on the rear door and returns to the kids, pointing the gun at the little boy, ordering a helpless five-year-old to put his hands up. They kept on putting the gun on him to, like, say, hands up. It, it, it's terrifying. It was my worst nightmare. Shafiq Khan is their father and still can't believe the terror they were forced to endure. The first instance was just to lock the door. So I locked the door and the, within like next few seconds they broke the door. So they kicked it through. And pretty, the... pretty vicious kicking. Yeah. He was then forced to open the secure counter where the cash was held. So while I was opening the lock, you know, I could feel the knife at my back. He had a knife, as you can see in the video, he was just doing this constantly. But even more terrifying than that knife was the heart-stopping sight right in front of him, a pistol being aimed at his children. I, I kept on, like, looking at my kids, you know. Um, I, I was terrified, obviously, if I had a million dollars, I wouldn't even dare resisting, because my kid's life is more than a million dollars. It's, it's priceless. The nightmare was over in just minutes and after the gunman fled, eight-year-old Zara runs to her dad, but five-year-old Ibrahim stays down, frozen in fear. For the first two, three days, like, you know, he, he would get scared in his dream. And he said, don't shoot me, don't shoot me. Back in the safety of their home, the Khan family still can't quite believe how lucky they are. He's definitely had more cuddles since. <laughs> Mum Yasmin says they moved to Australia seven years ago in the hope of a peaceful new life. But Sydney's epidemic of gun-related crime has destroyed that. The fact that these people have not only they've, they've come into our you know, business and they've threatened our staff, but our children, I mean, where do they draw the line? I thought it was just like a game. It's, it's just like people come and they're pretending. But then he told us to sit down and have our hands up. Ten days on, the children are still so frightened they want to sleep in mum and dad's room. The memories of what happened and still he, so raw. He, he kept on pointing the gun at us, so he was pointing it at me, and I was trying to curl under the chair, and I was trying to curl under it so no one can see me, but I was too scared to move in case they see me. There is no doubt we're dealing with a group of people who don't care about life. Clive Small is a former assistant commissioner of the New South Wales Police. Points his gun he says Sydney's plague of gun crime is creeping dangerously beyond gangland boundaries. A lot of the drive-by shootings we're seeing are fired into houses indiscriminately, often the wrong house is hit. It's only a matter of time before some young kid is going to be shot and killed. He also believes there needs to be mandatory sentences for anyone caught with an illegal gun. It's a minimum of five years. No argument. No discount. You don't carry guns around unless you're intent on shooting someone. Shafiq Khan's taxi services business is located right in the heart of Sydney's gun problem in Roselands. He operates the FPOS terminals used by taxi drivers to collect fares. But after being robbed at gunpoint twice in nine months, he's no longer dealing in cash. And we're quite disgusted by the behaviour of these particular offenders. Inspector Paul Albury is the detective leading the hunt for the men who targeted Shafiq and his children. And I'm sure that someone out there would recognise the clothing or potentially have heard something about this offence and we'd appeal for them to come forward and assist us with our inquiries. 
The ordeal has had such a huge impact on Shafiq and his family that they now want out. They've decided to sell this thriving business that they started from scratch and leave Australia altogether. He said, where's the cash? Shafiq moved to Australia from Pakistan, but now believes the streets of Rawalpindi are safer than Sydney. A lot of people will still want to come to Australia for a bright future. My message to them would be, don't. It's not safe. Especially Sydney. I can't afford to live like this. I can't afford to live in fear. I can't have my children or, you know, us as parents looking over our backs. It's kind of like, you know, that's not, that's not how we chose to live. The family plans and, uh, to leave Sydney for Yasmin's native England once they find a buyer for the business. They agreed to speak out in the hope it might lead to a breakthrough in finding these callous criminals. Someone out there must know something and the fact that they can come forward and they can just end this nightmare for us. I think they're really bad and they're nasty. Poor little kids, that's just chilling. And if you have any information that may help catch those thieves, please contact Crime Stoppers. The number is on your screen.